brothers and sisters she's never met. But right now, please welcome Tammy Faye Messner. I met you 10 minutes ago, yeah. and, and I feel, as I guess most Americans and probably most people in the world, they feel they already know you. You have been so much a part of our culture for the last 10 years. And I guess what I want to ask in the beginning yes, Jerry. is what was it like going through what must have been the most public hell a person can go through? Well... If God hadn't have been with me, I really feel like I would have committed suicide. It was that bad. It was waking up in the morning. And have you ever woke up in the morning after somebody died? And you wake up and for just a moment everything's okay. And then you realize, oh, my mama died. Or my, my child died. Or, or someone I love, my friend is gone. And a, a terrible aching comes over you. And a big lump comes in the pit of your stomach and all you want to do is pull the covers over your head and never get out of bed again as long as you live. And that's the way I felt for every morning for the last five years. I would wake up and, it, and you think you would stop thinking about it. But it really is the first thing that would come to my mind every single morning. Why? 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 What, what was the first day, the first morning you woke up that was the worst? Was it the morning that you found out about Jim and Jessica Hahn, or was it the morning you found out that, he, that you were gonna lose the church, or that he was indicted? I mean, what was the first time that it suddenly started? The, oh morning, th the morning that I woke up and realized that Jim had signed Heritage USA over to Jerry Falwell was, the, was probably the most horrible day of my entire life ever. Why was that the worst? Why was that worse than, than Jessica Hahn? Or why was that worse than the indictment? What? The indictment was terrible, and I didn't hear you say indictment. I'm sorry, okay. Jerry, That's I didn't okay. hear you say indictment. That was probably the very worst, because uh, I, felt, I, f I felt so alone. I thought, you know, I had never been alone in my whole life before. I'd always been taken care of. I got married when I was like just barely 18 years old and there was always someone there to take care of me. And, I've, and my daddy, you know, left when we were three years old, when I was just a little girl. And so the psychiatrists say that I had a fear of abandonment. And I think I probably did have a fear of abandonment. And when I heard that Jim had gotten indicted and that there was a possibility of prison, which to me was the most horrible word in, my, in the whole world, prison, you know. And um, I can't even tell you what it was like. I mean, think of the worst thing that's ever happened in your life and, and, and double it about ten times, and that's what it was like. Was it the fear of abandonment, perhaps, that made you, I won't say overlook, but at least be willing to forgive what Jim had well, done? Well, see, so much happened, Jerry. So much was happening, and I didn't find out about Jessica Hahn until everybody else did. And, they, and, and uh, they came in the room the day before Jerry Falwell had said that he was going to release, release something. It happened nine years ago. It happened nine years ago. And we had built all of Heritage USA since then. And so Jerry Falwell said, I am going to tell the people that you had a, an affair with Jessica Hahn, he told Jim. And Jim said, but I have never told my wife. And he said, well, you had better tell her. And so I'll never forget the day that Jim came in the bedroom yeah. and told me. I was so afraid of everything else that was happening that I knew I had to help Jim through this. I just knew I had to be strong for him. And so no matter what I had to go through, I felt I had to be strong for him so that he wouldn't commit suicide. Because, I mean, it was, it was touch and go for a long time. Okay. And then, initially, people come to your support. Yes. Because you are the wronged woman. I mean, you've been hurt. And you didn't do anything wrong. 
in hindsight now, mm -hmm. this fear of abandonment, you don't want to lose your husband, you don't want to lose the church, you don't want to lose this... Well, women like everything to stay the same always, you know. Yeah. Women like things to stay the way they are. When PTL was little, that's the way I wanted it to stay. I never wanted, you know, I'm a, I was afraid of growing, I think. I wanted everything to be the same so it was safe. Do you now look back in hindsight and say, you know, every day I'm before the country saying, please send us your money. Mm -hmm. Please believe in God as I do. Mm -hmm. The world is righteous. Do mm -hmm. all these wonderful things. And while all this was going on, out the back door was going the money. Out the back door was going people's faith uh, yeah, and trust. I disagree with you on that. And let me tell you why. And I bought a little paper with me so that I could get it right. When I get nervous sometimes, that's okay. I can't get it right. So I get cue cards too, so okay. that's fine. But Jim was accused of bilking, and I hate that word bilking. I think it's a very unkind word. But he was accused of bilking. I'd rather they just say steal. He was accused of stealing from the people $150 million. And let me tell you what happened. People that say that have never been to Heritage USA. Let me tell you what was at Heritage. Two 500-room hotels were at Heritage. A hun another 100-room hotel. Bunk houses that had several rooms. A huge shopping center. A huge water park. Schools. Condos. Homes. People were taken around Heritage USA on buses and trains. We had, we had Billy Graham's uh, boyhood home there. There was 25,000 acres of landscaping there. The money that, the reason Jim is in pr prison is not because he stole anything. We had Why the, do you think he's in prison? We had the accounting firm of uh, a very famous accounting firm, and they said in the trial that no misuse of monies had been done. Jim is in prison because he could not fulfill his obligation to the partners. He had promised them lifetime memberships in the Heritage Grand for a thousand dollar gift. He would grant them a lifetime membership. They, well, when Jerry Falwell took over PTL, Jerry wanted the mailing list of PTL, which was worth millions, and Jerry wanted the PTL satellite network, which is the biggest in the whole world. He took the mailing list the very first day that he went into PTL, he took the mailing list to Lynchburg, Virginia, and he did not get the satellite network, and I don't know all the particulars okay. on that. Without going through all the details yes. again, I understand your strong and admirable support and love for this man who now sits in jail, sentenced to 45 years. Yes. It may not be 45 years that he no, serves he gets right. Out this okay. year, yes. but, but sentenced to 45 yeah. years. <laughs> and your support for him and your tears for him and your love for him, people were saying, so they're watching this saying, yeah. wow, she's sticking with him. She's sticking with him. So the question, we're going to take a break. When we come back, <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance. When we come back, if you so love him, and you so support him, and you stuck with him through the toughest times of his life, the question which we'd want to know is then, why, while he sits in jail, do you leave him? Okay. We're okay. going to take a break. <laughs> Later on, we're going to meet her new husband and the brothers and sisters Tammy has never seen. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. We are back with uh, Tammy Faye Messner, used to be Tammy Faye Baker. Um, before I pick up that question about why did you decide to leave him, um, people that got angry were getting angry because um, you're asking, send your money. Every day there was this beautiful church service, in a sense. Um, we had 18 church services a day. Okay. There was all this going on. And the fact is that you guys were living pretty well. Yes, It we was did. a really, really good life. And I guess we have the picture of not just little old ladies, but little young men as well. Everybody sending their money in. They don't have a lot of money, but they see you and you are so compelling, so persuasive. 
and they see the tears and they see the love of God and all that. And when they say, please send us your money, whatever you can, we, we, you get the life membership or you, we got to build a Heritage USA. We got to build these facilities. Okay, I'll, I'll send my hundred dollars. It's going to be tough, but I'll send my hundred dollars. And then they see how you all live. And it isn't just you guys, but it's so many of these televangelists that do that. And, and that makes Jerry, people angry. Jerry, we did not hide how we lived. We had probably the most beautiful set in the nation. We have our, the, our television set, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, was a beautiful home. Jim and I had the people in our home. We, we took the television cameras to our home. They drove with us in our cars. They saw how we lived. And it wasn't, it Is that was right, not though? our Should partners, like it was not our partners who were angry at us. It was people who had never given to PTL that became angry, which I don't understand that, you know, because well, our partners, our partners wrote us by the thousands af, 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 when we lost PTL and said, we love you and we want you back. I sympathize with uh, the affair that Jim had, but uh, don't you feel that the reward for passing on your messages should be the fact that you're saving souls, not making millions of dollars so that you can have a huge Honey, mansion. we were putting the millions of dollars back into the ministry. And besides, I want to tell you one other sure. thing, though, just so that you can understand this. I made albums every year. I made about three albums every year. I did not take one penny from the albums. My albums bought in two million dollars each album a year. I did not take one single penny of that. So what Jim and I bought, got for both of us together for one year, a half of what we got in for one album would have paid our salary. I see. Tammy, my question is twofold. Sure, honey. Uh, have you corresponded with Jim while he's in prison? And B, uh, somehow, someway, do you still love him a little bit? Well, Even though you, you remarried. He's, well, you know, he's the father of my children, and so Jim and I will always be good friends. And I will always defend Jim because I really believe that in, he did not do anything intentionally wrong. I, I had never heard you said I must have heard Jerry behind the scenes, them talking. and th I never heard that. Everything was very open. We had accountants. We had bookkeepers. We had every kind of firm. The IRS had an office right next to us. If there was something wrong, I think they should have found it and come to us with the money. Why did you leave him? I left Jim because the, mar the marriage workshops at PTL were started because of the problems Jim and I had. Jim and I had, ha had had problems for many, many years. Part of it due to the fact that he worked so terribly hard and I felt very abandoned. I felt like I had to raise my children by myself and there were things that just happened that hurt me so bad, so deep. And then when, when Jim lost, we, we built Pat Robertson's network and we left it. We built TB and Trinity Broadcasting Network and we left that. We uh, were asked to leave Trinity Broadcasting Network. And then we built Heritage USA. And when Jim told me that we were going, that, you know, if I would wait till he got out and we would build again, I told him, I said, Jim, I cannot build again. I do not have the strength to build again. And there is no way I can do it. I cannot live your life anymore. And I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to know, do you have any kids and how old are they? Yeah, I got two. <laughs> how, how do they feel about your past and all that? Okay. Uh, my children, we shared everything with them. Tammy Sue is 23. Jay will be 18 in just a couple of weeks. And we shared everything with them. We were very honest with them. We shared our version of it. Plus, we read the newspaper and explained into the, the newspaper version of it. So my kids today, I have two little grandkids. My children are very intelligent young people, and they're very, they have a lot of common sense, and they're really nice kids. Hi, Tammy. Hi, hi. I have been listening to you, and you have been saying, we, 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 mm -hmm. we built this, we did that, uh -huh. we did this. Uh -huh. well, why is it that Jim is spending his time in prison and you are not? I don't know. I mean, I, all I did was sing. I yeah. sang. Uh, the only thing I did was sing. I guess they don't yeah. put you in prison for singing. I had nothing to do at all with the running of the ministry. Did you not spend the money also? No, the Jim Banker no. Took I, from people? I did not spend any. I, well, I mean, what I had my paycheck. What supported you? What bought Honey, your jewelry I had, and your I had furs? my paycheck. I had my no. paycheck, but that's all I spent was my paycheck. A lot of us raised children on our own. I did too. I all the things you've had, honey, and I've, we did it all legally. I've experienced legally. that too. I, when Jim went to prison, I ended up with one thousand dollars. That was all we had, and you can believe that or not. And I re and I got myself back to work again, and I took care of my son by myself. 
Okay, like many women who stand behind their men during tragedy became too much for Tammy, and she finally decided it was time to let go. She thought she would be alone the rest of her life, but then she found this man. Coming up next, Tammy's new husband, Roe Messner. Please stay with us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jerry Springer. Do you know a single parent whose kids don't want him or her to start dating again? Call us at 1-800-29-JERRY and tell us about it. Welcome back. When Tammy Faye divorced Jim Baker in 1992, she thought she had sentenced herself to a life of loneliness that no one would want her. She was wrong. Roe Messner wanted her. Welcome Tammy Faye's new husband, Roe Messner. What? I am sure glad you're here. <laughs> They've been putting me through the ringer out here. <laughs> it's okay, though. I'm glad to answer any questions. What, what did... Uh... What don't we know about her, Ro? Well, you probably don't realize how common and down to earth she is. You know, Tammy's the oldest of 16 kids. Right. <laughs> and um, eight of the kids, you know, grew up with her there, there at the house, but she had another eight brothers and sisters that she's never met. <laughs> and I think most people probably don't know that. <laughs> and then she's also very funny. <laughs> she's, um, she's one of the best joke tellers you've ever heard. She, she'll start telling the joke, and then about halfway through it, she'll start laughing before she gets to the punchline. How, how did you meet? How we meet? I met Tammy, first of all, in 1978, when I was asked to be a guest on the PTL show. And Tammy interviewed me. That's the first time we met. And do you remember him? No. <laughs> hey, nice first impression, Ro, huh? Yeah, yeah I know. Okay. I was really good. Okay. <laughs> and then th that you met, and then how did that... Well, then in this. 1983, uh, Jim hired me as his architect and general contractor to build a Heritage USA. And so I, I started designing and building all the buildings there at Heritage. And, you know, I saw Tammy. I, I see her a lot. But I, I would say in the six or seven years that I, I built the buildings down there, I only talked to her once or twice yeah. in all that time. We never did anything social. You know, everybody always says that Jim and I were these great buddies. And when did this... But that what, wasn't true at all. You weren't a buddy with Jim? No. I mean, we were... I was... I worked for Jim. I had contracts to build buildings for him. We never did anything social. We never went out to when lunch did this turn or supper or anything okay, like that. Okay, when did this turn into a romance? <laughs> After Tammy got a divorce. What, uh... Do you feel, I mean, obviously you love her and you're married and oh. I, God bless you and all that, <laughs> but uh, do you feel awkward? Her, you met through her former husband. Her former husband now sits in jail. For all I know, it's watching the show. Um, sometimes it's punishment. They make the uh, inmates watch the show. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> he has been quoted as saying that he still loves Tammy. <laughs> he still loves Tammy. I'm and, sure that's true. And he may get out in a year. Good. Do you worry about him coming back and saying, come on? No, Jim, Jim's a wonderful man, and I admire him very much. Uh, and I, I can understand why he would still love Tammy. I think that's very easy to understand. But Jim knows what problem that, that Tammy and he had, and Tammy knows what it was, and Jim knows what it was, and... And I don't think the world needs to know what that problem was. What's it certainly wasn't me, Jerry. I, okay. Mm -hmm. What's the Christian message here, though? Um, is the message that they have a marriage, the marriage has some difficulties, but isn't the message that constantly comes through, work it out, make, stick together, when you walk down the aisle and you stand before the preacher and, 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 and before God and you say, till death do us part, for better or worse, the worst now is Jim's in prison. Is this the time that you ought to have been staying with? And I'm not trying to break up your marriage here, but, I mean, is, is this the time that the Christian well, message is, hey, Jerry, the guy's in prison, I'll see you later. No, the guy's in prison, I'm sticking with him. I, I, don't think, I don't think you understand how hard Tammy and Jim tried to work out their okay. marriage. 
the marriage workshops at PTL were started as a result of we that. We really tried. They worked for about 12 years to try yes, to solve their did. problems. We've been separated before. Jim and I have been separated once also. I see. Yes. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Hi Earl. Um, I heard that when you got married, you didn't invite your children to the wedding. Why was that? We asked them not to come, honey, because we felt that it would hurt the uh, Rose ex-wife and my ex-husband, and we didn't want them to have to take sides. What type of reunion do you feel uh, you'll have once uh, he gets, uh, gets out of prison? How will this all work as the three of you uh, together? I don't think that Jim will even come, come to see us. I don't think he will, but if he does, Jim will always be a friend and there will be no problem. You know, life goes on, but what happened yesterday is history. We, we have to live our lives today. Yes, we do. And we make big right. plans for tomorrow. But if it happened yesterday, it's history. There's nothing and you can do about yesterday, no matter how much you want to. It's dead and it's gone and it's over. If you don't live today, then you're, if you're living in the past, you will ruin your life if you live in the past. Do you feel any responsibility to help those who contributed to, over the years, to the PTL and now the investment just didn't work out? I mean, I know he's in prison, but other than that, do you... I feel Jim feels a great responsibility, and I really feel that someday he will work to do everything he can to, uh, to handle that responsibility, because I know he feels it greatly. I think that you deserve a lot of credit for turning your back and walking away and raising your kids by yourself and on your own and turning to him for Thank support. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tammy. My name is Reverend L.J. Welch with the Hi, Christian LJ. Comfort Association. Uh, it's only a very few of us born that live beyond making mistakes. Some make baby mistakes and some make huge mistakes. But uh, I want to say this. God is a forgiving God. Yes. And in a way I can support you to help you move forward, you and your husband, give me a call, Thank will you? Thank you. Thank okay. you. God bless you. What were, we all know about Jessica Hahn, but what were the other problems in, in, in the marriage that made it so difficult? Well, Jessica Hahn was not a problem in our marriage. Someone's nice to me and I, I cry more for because people being nice than I do for people being mean. <laughs> I'm used to them being mean, but it, when they're nice, no, it's... No, we'll uh, we are so nice here, we've got tissues <laughs> in there. This is, and I uh, said I wasn't going to do this anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would rather not discuss our marriage problems other than the f p fact that it was a, it was a it was the same thing what I told you before. It was the fact that I felt like uh, my husband and many women feel this way that their husband loved their work more than they loved them and they feel abandoned and feel left by themselves. Jim and I lived really two separate lives, and that's very hard when you're married to lead two separate lives. Is it possible? And I know this is difficult, but I'll carry on anyway, I guess. But Jessica Hahn was not a part of our life. I understand. Life. Uh, okay. Is it possible that when we have people coming on this television and preaching, preaching through the Word of God to live this kind of a life, are you obliged to live by a higher standard? Are you obliged, if not to have a vow of poverty or a vow of celibacy or about, are you obliged to just stick it out more? To, to accept less? Sure, you have a right to live in whatever house you want to live in. Sure, you have a right to get divorced. Sure, you have a right to do all these things. But isn't there a standard there? If you're preaching to America, this is the way you ought to live. Send me your money. These are the righteous. These people aren't. These are the sinners. Should someone who gives that all message... All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if I were perfect, I'd be in heaven right now. Okay. I am, uh, I'm not perfect. I don't pretend to be perfect. And I've made some terrible mistakes in my life. But as our brother said there, God does forgive. And I'm grateful that he does. Okay, I guess you are. Okay. The last time Tammy saw them, she is, was just a child. Some she's never seen at all. When we come back, Tammy is reunited with her brothers and sisters. Don't go away. <laughs> Guests of the Jerry Springer Show stay at the elegant Midland Hotel in the heart of downtown Chicago, where guests enjoy a complimentary lavish breakfast buffet and attentive personal service. Welcome back. 
I'm Jerry Springer, and today we're talking with Tammy Faye and her new husband, Roe Messner. Like many others, Tammy Faye is the product of a divorced family. Her parents were divorced when she was three years old. She always wondered about her eight half-brothers and sisters, but would never ask who or how they were doing. And I guess my question is, why not? Wouldn't that be a natural question? Uh, yes, it would be. I knew about them, but because my mother... I didn't want to hurt my mother, and I love my stepfather who brought me up. He was my daddy to me ever since I was three years old. And so I didn't want to hurt my mom, and I didn't want to hurt my daddy, so I just never ask. Okay, and do you know anything about them? What, what no, I don't. I don't know anything about my brothers and sisters other than the fact that they watched me on television, and they know what I look like, but I don't know what they look like, and I always wondered, who in my family do I look like? <laughs> I did never know. Did they write you? Did they correspond? They, ha they have corresponded with me because of my cousin Phyllis. They, uh, they have corresponded with me. In fact, one of my brothers was going to come and be the best man, at the, or the give me away at our wedding, and he had a serious operation just before it happened, but it, it, that could have been that I could have met one of my brothers for the very first time at my wedding, and I was so excited about that, but he had to have an operation and couldn't come. Did you ever talk about them on your show? No, I, I, yeah. ne excuse me, honey, I never talked about my brothers and sisters at all because I didn't know how they would feel about it, and there again, I didn't want to hurt my mother who just yeah. died, and, and my stepfather who I love very much. Yeah, d you have met your, but you did see your um, birth father. I have met my birth father twice in my life. Oh, you, tell us about that. Well, one time uh, I went to meet him over. He has a twin sister named Aunt Dolly. And uh, they asked me to come over, and there was this line of men standing up, and I got out of the car, and I looked at these men, and I didn't know any of them, so I had no idea. And all of a sudden, this cute little man steps out, kisses me right on the mouth, and says, Hi, Tammy. I'm your daddy. <laughs> and I almost died. I went home and told my mom, I know why you liked him, because he's awful cute. <laughs> okay, well, I tell you what. Uh, they couldn't all make it, uh, but right now, I want you to... Uh Meet at least those of your brothers and sisters who you have, in a sense, never seen. No, I've least. never seen them. Okay. And uh, so here it is some, some odd years later. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say how many, but <laughs> what are First, let's meet Bob. Brother Bob. Robert. 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 <laughs> and Brother Ron. Don't and don't Sister Penny. All down here from here. And Brother Roger. And Sister Paula. Okay. Okay, I can I can imagine. What's your name? Paula. Paula. Hi, Paula. Oh. She's sitting there. You're there. Wow. <laughs> okay. I uh, this yeah I can imagine how you feel. What I can't imagine is why all of you or some of you or one of you. Did you try and get in touch with her? I mean, I guess if I knew I had a sister or a brother, a half-brother or a sister, and particularly if it was someone who was so visible, and therefore you know where they are. Yes, we did. Yes. I did. Okay, tell me about that. Well, uh, our cousin. Uh, Phyllis? Phyllis. <laughs> yes. Uh, she did not know at first whether or not Tammy wanted to uh, participate. And uh, so we really didn't know what to do. I did make uh, my feelings uh, known uh, to her. And it was just a question of uh, waiting for it to happen. I kind of figured that um, when this uh, arose, this chance, that I thought maybe that she would feel better uh, in this surrounding, probably, than, than on our, our turf. <laughs> Did you find any time when, when uh, Tammy was going through all that public, in a sense, public humiliation for all that was, she was going through, at that time, did you suddenly feel closer to her? I mean, was there all of a sudden, when you heard other people standing around the uh, coffee machine and, and 
Tammy knows this is going on. People would be telling jokes. People would be cruel as they are. You know. I made a comment to one of my coworkers. I said, hey, that's my sister you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and they say, right, I'm George Washington. Yeah, I said, no, really. Yeah. And they said, for sure? I said, yes, her father is my father. And they go, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I heard one time that a preacher got up in church and said something about us, and one of these wonderful brothers said, you're ta he stood right up in church with the preacher and said, Pastor, you're talking about my sister, and I wish you would not talk about her. Yeah. Is this, uh, are you all uh, as religious as she is? Did you all grow up being the... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, probably, church goers? Probably not, probably not in the way you're speaking of it, no. No. So it, was it, uh, could you see any similarities? I mean, when she was up there, did you kind of say to yourself, boy, I can't believe we have the same dad. <laughs> or, <laughs> any of that? She definitely looks exactly like Dad. Yeah. Oh, really? Exactly. Yep. Spitting yeah. image. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. says, yeah, yeah, do yeah. I really? Yeah. 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 Well, you, well, when was the last time, at the, at the age of 14, was it? <laughs> when was it the last time you saw him? You were 14? No, the last time, the last time I saw him, I took my baby, um, when I got, a, got pregnant with Tammy Sue and had the baby, I took, I took my baby to meet him. Yes. But I didn't know that I looked that much like him. <laughs> I just wanted to get back to something before I just couldn't get in to the <laughs> question. But, uh, you know, as a person of faith, uh, you know, and I heard you talk about, well, if, how bad things were and you were going to commit suicide or Jim was going to commit suicide. As people of faith, I, I would think that would be the last thing from your mind. You're right. You're, you're right. It should be. <laughs> and I'll tell you, when you're put in a place sometimes, in, in the right place at the wrong time, you don't know yourself what you will do. No one knows what they will do unless they're put in that spot. So you've got to be really careful, you know. Okay, what I would like to do, and maybe we'll take a break now, and we'll do when we come back so I can let you get your thoughts together. I want to step out of this, and I want to have you talk to Tammy. <laughs> what do you want to say? You haven't, you haven't seen her your whole life. What do you want to say to her, uh, either about what has happened in her life, Let's hear brothers and sisters talk, okay? I have a okay? cute family here. Don't go away. <laughs> okay, we are back with Tammy Faye Baker and the brother, brothers and sisters she has never met. Paula, what... First time in your life you're seeing her in person. <laughs> what would you like to say to her? Um, Paula, do I look as bad as they say? <laughs> um, I just wish that it's, we had to wait this long to get together. I mean, it's... We missed a lot of good years, right. haven't we? Yep. No more. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I can't wait till she comes to our family reunion we have every year. We have an absolute blast, and I'm sure she'd have a great time. I've heard about their family reunions. They dress up and do the whole thing. What were you thinking when, you, when she was going through all of this? Well, I'm a little lost for words. I don't know. I, I, I haven't really known her, so I, I find it hard to talk about it in front of a group that's fair you know yeah, that's an honest um, thing yeah he looks like my daddy <laughs> yeah i'm probably the better looking one <laughs> I don't, you know. it was better when you had nothing to say all right <laughs> no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding okay what do you what, what do you think what were you thinking what are you thinking now i mean this is you know, to be related to Tammy Faye at the time Baker during the 1980s. No, it was, not a, it was a swear word. Let's just say it. <laughs> well, there was a lot going on. There's got to be yeah, some I emotion some, other than, yeah, well, I, I think really we're related. I really had some mixed emotions about it, you know, because I didn't know her. Um, in some ways, I thought, you know, what are these people doing? In other ways, I, and in another way, I, I did feel sorry for her. <laughs> you know, I felt some compassion there for her. What are these people doing? Talk to me about that. Uh, in, in well, what? when you said, what are these people, do oh, what are this, the public doing or what are they doing? What are they doing? Because I didn't really understand the full scope of this whole thing and I may never, mm -hmm. maybe I never will, I don't know. Uh, but I think from listening to Tammy on the last few shows and I, I believe she's been very honest about what she's been saying, 
Uh, what I was feel your feeling about televangelists? Did you watch any of the televangelist shows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. I okay, thought. and they're coming at you and they I say, thought, send money, <laughs> send money. <laughs> Praise the Lord, send money. What are you thinking? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's pointing right at me, yeah, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to pick on Ronnie. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think any of us did send any money that I know of. Um, I think that uh, if a person did send money, I think that's between them and and uh, God. And God, thank you. And uh, what it, what it was what it was for, what it was supposed to be. If it helped them, I think that's that's yeah. fine. It's great. Yeah. Mm. I just want to know, um, are you planning on spending Christmas together now that you're together? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We've never, we haven't said anything about it. I don't it. think this there's any plans in the works so the far. Time we see each other. The three on the sure left, the, the three on the left are Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, aren't they handsome, man? God, I'm just really kidding. Go ahead. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. Hi, honey. Um, what, what will become of the future of you and your, your new husband? Well, we're going on, thank God, and I thank God for an opportunity to start over at my age. <laughs> and, uh, Roel, what, what, what do you see for the future, honey? Well, Tammy's going to get started back singing and preaching in the churches. You know, her goal is to try to help people. Uh, she's always been the you-can-make-it girl, and now she's, she's helping people with her 900 number, 288. T A M M Y. Okay. You can make it. You're sounding like Jerry Brown. <laughs> okay, listen. We're going to take a break, and when we come okay. back, we're going to hear Tammy, but I also want to pursue a question here. Okay. Tammy, you have been through the greatest public scrutiny. Everyone has had a comment. Yeah. Uh, 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 a, a word of either compassion or joke or hostility or support. They either you, like me or they hate me. There's no in between. <laughs> but having gone through that, then the question is. Why do you want to go on with it? I mean, why doesn't Tammy Faye Baker said, you know what? I'm going to be very religious. I'm going to still pray to the God. I'm still going to get involved in the church. But I don't have to have a 900 number. I don't have to be on television. I don't even have to go on talk shows. Why, after all this, wouldn't you say, enough of all that. <laughs> it's between me and God. I'm going to live a private life. I tried for five years living let's, a private life. Let's proceed that when we come back. Stay with us. For your free tickets to the Jerry Springer Show in Chicago, write Jerry Springer Tickets, Post Office Box 4115, Chicago, Illinois, 60654, or call 312-321-5365. We are visiting today with Tammy Faye, and the question I asked just before we t took the break, after all you went through and all the public humiliation, wouldn't you now want to say enough of the 900 numbers, enough of the TV, enough of even talk shows, I'm going to have my private life with Jerry, God. I tried for five years to live as a private person and it just didn't work because, you know, I still gave out autographs. I still, I, I still had pictures taken. I still had people coming up to me all the time. And I only can do what I know how to do. And I miss the people. I love the people and I miss them. And I've been through a lot of hurt and I want to help them go through their hurt too and let them, show them how to make it through one day at a time the way I did because that's the only way I made it. Okay, good for you. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to thank you very much, Tammy Faye, for being with us today. Um, uh, you've been through a lot, and I wish you Godspeed and peace in your life. And to your brothers and sisters, Enjoy, enjoy the reunion. You know, Thank you're you still for bringing us back together. Today. Sure. You'll we'll never know how much. It's the best Christmas present I could ever have. Thank you. <laughs> you know, considering she was never charged with a crime, she was never accused of infidelity. In fact, it was she who was cheated on. She who lost a husband and a church and a career. 
Why in the world was everyone getting on her case? Wasn't she as much a victim as anyone in the PTL scandal? Why did she have to suffer the most public of humiliations? And of course she did. Let's face it, comedians, commentators, and writers made a living off Tammy Faye jokes. And if the truth be known, we, the American public, enjoyed it all a little bit too much. How we love to see the mighty fall, and we play no ideological favorites. We'll cheer the stumblings of conservatives as well as liberals. Nixon, Swaggart, Oliver North, Gary Hart, Ted Kennedy. Scandal watching, clearly replacing baseball as our national pastime. Michael Jackson, merely the latest preoccupation of our insatiable appetite for icon toppling. And yet, where in most of these cases there is alleged wrongdoing, either legal or moral, what is it that turned the public against Tammy Faye? Frank as well as a gift. No, I think it was the style that offended. You see, we say we're a religious nation, and yet we seem uncomfortable with those who wear religion on their sleeves, who pray so openly, cry so visibly, practice so incessantly. It's like, okay, believe in God, teach your kids good values, live by the golden rule, but hey, come on, keep all this religion stuff to yourself, or at least confine it to Sundays or the holidays. When Tammy Faye didn't give it a rest, when she poured on the God talk, even during the height of scandal and humiliation, she became an easy target of America's discomfort. And so our reaction to her during her public travail may say more about us than about her. Till next time, take care of yourself and each other.